Hey Summoners, how's it going? My name is Crumbs and I'll be your host for our low elo tier list for patch 13.8. If you want to climb out of low elo fast, look no further. I'll give you information you can reference so you know how to pick, ban, or start learning if you want to rank up. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content like this and let's get started. Starting off our video, we've got our updated low elo tier list for the top lane. The top picks we have for this patch are Malphite, Dr. Mundo, Mordekaiser, Yorick, Zack, and even Singed. To dive further into it, let's talk about Dr. Mundo first. He's in our OP tier for a good reason. He has no problems jumping into the heat of fights and somehow finds himself in a great spot for it. You're rewarded for being daring and let's be honest, for sometime just turning your brain off and going Mundo mode on people. Our analysts value Mundo heavily, not just because he's strong, but also because he's simple and easier to learn than most other champions. With his high base stats and powerful abilities, he brings with him a powerful laning face that a lot of players aren't going to be able to deal with effectively. He also scales well, so you'll end up becoming a high damage tank that can carry your team in several ways as the game progresses. What makes Mundo such a great carry is that he can be overwhelming to lane against. A lot of top laners aren't going to be able to kill him, especially if he pulls ahead. He's able to lead his team to victory with enough of a lead, and especially in low elo, he'll simply destroy enemy carries as they won't have the skill or maybe even the team compositions to stop him. Easy isn't bad, at least it isn't for you that is. Your opponents will have to work so much harder than you to try and stop you, so I heavily suggest Mundo if you're stuck in a slump or want to have someone ready in case you need to play top lane. Our second featured top laner is Poppy. Our analysts have rated her 3 out of 7 for difficulty, but 5 out of 7 for her carry potential. There are a couple of things you need to learn before getting the most value out of playing Poppy. Improper use of Poppy's abilities can lead to mana issues during the laning phase, so you'll want to be mindful of this. Don't be discouraged if you end up struggling with this at first. Just take note of it and try to adjust in the following games. One other thing you want to try and learn is how to optimally cast your abilities and rotate through them to get the most value. While she's not the most difficult champion, there's a lot of nuance behind playing her and you'll want to be very careful with how you use your ultimate and your W. For her carry potential, Poppy has the flexibility to choose between either Iceborne Gauntlet or Divine Sunderer. Based on how your games are going or what your team needs from you, you can adapt and make this important decision to alter the course of a game. Regardless of which build you choose, the one thing that will always be relevant is Poppy's immense utility. Her never-ending CC and one of the best Ws in the game is so good to have. I really mean it when I say she's one of the best. You can shut down a lot of champions who rely on dashes with it or even save your allies from otherwise certain death. With the top lane wrapping up, I also wanted to give one of our newest partners at Pro Guides, General Sniper, a chance to talk to you guys as well. Hey everyone, General Sniper here. If you want to learn how I hit Challenger at age 12 and hit rank 1 multiple times, check out my course on Pro Guides, where you'll also get access to 500 other lessons and boot camps for only $7.99 a month with no commitment. Click the link and check it out at ProGuides.com. And that covers the top lane, so let's head into the jungle next. Go ahead and take a look at our jungle tier list. We have Jarvan, Nocturne, and Evelyn as our OP picks this patch. Not too far behind are Rammus, Mordekaiser, and again, Dr. Mundo. Another reason to pick up Mundo, he's a powerful flex pick. In the jungle, our first featured pick is Lilia. If you're looking to add an explosive AP carry to your roster of champions, look no further. Lilia has a fast, healthy clear, so you'll be able to at least do the most essential part of your job just fine. However, she isn't the easiest champion because you need to have solid movement to play her optimally. You also have to land your E for the best ganks, which is much easier said than done. But once you practice enough, you'll get the hang of it. Given her recent buffs, Lilia is an extremely powerful champion that can outpressure many of her opponents. With her mobility and damage, a lot of other characters are going to struggle to deal with her. In addition, Lilia's build is pretty flexible, letting you build tankier or more damage based on what you need. Finally, her ultimate is able to decide the course of fights as it provides solid utility and great damage. Next, we have Vi, who our analyst mentioned is an easier champion to play as well. Rated at only 2 out of 7 difficulty while still providing maxed out carry potential, definitely consider picking her up if you want someone that just doesn't require too much investment. 
After level 6, you get the freest Yanks ever. Just press R and they're practically dead. That being said, one thing you do need to be mindful is that you can get invaded early and find aggressive enemy junglers that may give you a hard time. However, you're less likely to see this outside of higher levels of play. What makes Vi strong is that she spikes early and continues to be a huge threat as the game progresses. An early power spike allows her to aggressively fight for objectives or simply scrap with enemies to pick up leads. Later into the game, she has great backline access with her ultimate and can potentially one-shot carries for the vast majority of the game. If she's fed enough, this basically carries on throughout the whole match. That covers our jungle, so up next, let's talk about mid laners. Go ahead and check out our mid lane tier list for the patch. It's a popular role for a reason and you definitely can't slack on staying up to date if you want to climb. Our OP picks for the patch are Aurelian Soul, Anivia, and Victor, followed by Malzahar, Vagar, and Swain in the S plus tier. Aurelian Soul is an especially powerful pick in Loilo, so make sure to not forget about him. Now, let's talk about our first featured pick with Swain. To play him at his best, you'll need to invest some time, but it is absolutely worth it if you want to solo carry your games. What makes Swain hard is that you'll need to get good at stacking his passive to scale up over the course of the game. Also, his game plan is a bit different from other champions. While normally you're playing safe to scale or playing aggressively to find kills, you sort of have to do both with Swain. You can't play too safe because then you'll lack the stacks you need in the late game. However, too aggressive and you might find yourself vulnerable to ganks as Swain is rather immobile. However, Swain is one of the best team fighters in the game and that's further accentuated by the current state of the meta. After completing two or three items, Swain comes online and his high damage, tankiness and crowd control all contribute to making him an absolute team fighting monster. You want to group up and take as many fights as you can while you're at your strongest and proceed to steamroll your opponents. Fizz is another mid laner worth mentioning. The hardest parts of playing Fizz are trying to not get bullied out in the early game. High range champions can give you a hard time, poking you down and not giving you a chance to trade back in return. However, if you play patiently and farm up, you'll eventually hit that level 6 power spike and turn the tables on them. You'll also want to carefully consider your ability cooldowns and try to get the most impactful uses of your E that you can. It's a matter of effective uses as well as maximizing the frequency of them as well. That said, one of Fizz's biggest strengths is obviously his immense damage. Fizz flaunts some of the scariest burst damage in the game and there's really no one who can survive his full combo after level 6. If your opponents mess up in the early game, you can even pick up an easy kill and start dominating even earlier. One thing to be aware of however, is that if you don't close games out and your opponents start stacking magic resistances, you can start to fall off. While the damage isn't as potent, you'll still have the slippery safety of your E and even Azania's Hourglass. Before moving on, let's go ahead and talk about our question of the day. Which champion is your go-to ban at the moment? Don't hate me for saying it, but right now it's Melio. I know it's a big meme to say this, but it feels like whenever he's on the enemy team, he's super OP. And when he's on my team, not so much. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and let's move forward with the video. We've covered the mid lane, so let's run through the bot lane next. For our best bottom lane picks, we've got Jinx, Nila, and Ziggs as our top picks. Not too far behind them are Jin and Vagar in the S plus tier. For this patch, let's go ahead and talk a bit more about Jin. He's a bit harder to learn since he does play a bit differently than other marksmen. However, his laning phase is undeniably powerful and you'll definitely find him much easier once you get used to playing him. However, he's never easy per se since Jin does lack mobility and requires good aim to land his W and R. Don't sleep on his carry potential though. Jin snowballs hard because of how strong his early to mid game is. Enemies can quickly fall behind while he continues scaling and can more than easily one-shot squishies. When playing Jin, you hit a pretty early power spike with Gale Force and can really start taking control of the pace of the game. In addition, Jin's kit overall really lets you control the flow of the game. His traps provide great zone control, while his W and R let him dictate when a fight starts or help him set the pace during the middle of one. Finally, because his ultimate has such long range, he can contribute to fights while remaining well out of range of the opponents. And that covers our bottom lane tier list, so let's wrap things up with our supports. We have three tier lists to go over for support, so take note of our respective OP picks in Tarek, Melio, and Brand. Our featured pick for the patch is Tarek. 
He's about a medium difficulty champion that brings some insane carry potential with a solid kit and one of the best supporting ultimates in the game. When learning to play Taric, you need to make sure to rotate between spells optimally and auto attack between casts to maximize his damage and even healing. One of the hardest parts about playing Taric is simply learning when to use your R. This will only come with experience and you should definitely not expect yourself to do it perfectly right off the bat. You'll only develop this skill by playing him, so if you're okay playing a champion who sacrifices mobility for practically every form of utility you'd want from a support, don't be shy, give him a try and see how it works out for you. Taric deals solid damage during the early game and definitely take advantage of this especially against opponents who get cocky and start disrespecting you. He also scales very well, so you know that when playing him, basically any game is winnable. Again, his ultimate is absolutely insane. Being able to turn your entire team invincible, even if only for a brief moment, is a big deal. No other champion gets to do this, and your team basically gets to play as aggressively as they want, with no consequences for a couple of seconds. That covers our supports. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the content. Good luck on the Rift this patch, and I wish you the best of luck in your games. See you all in the next one.